Do me a favor and watch this video till the end. Design Patterns As a software developer, you may have heard of design patterns, but do you know what they are and why we use them? Design patterns are like blueprints for software. They are pre-made solutions to common problems in software design. They take care of the details so that you can focus on the overall design of your program. In this video, we will discuss the top 5 design patterns in no specific order that every software developer should know because there are so many and some of the design patterns no one uses. So what do you call a design pattern that no one uses? I call it a dead pattern. Alright, let's get started. First one is the factory method design pattern. Interestingly, this pattern shares a common trait with our boss who consistently delegates the task to me. In essence, this method empowers a class to delegate the creation of objects to its subclasses. But how? First of all, there are two crucial points you need to understand. Objects are created through abstraction, not concretion. And the second one is, objects are created by calling the factory method instead of calling a default constructor. Now let's imagine that you want a pizza, but you don't want to worry about getting all the ingredients and putting them together. So instead, you just order a pizza. Well, we can do the same thing with the code. If it takes a list of ingredients to create a pizza, we can instead use a pizza factory which will instantiate the pizza and return it to us. Whether it's a cheese pizza, a deluxe pizza or even a vegetarian pizza, all we have to do is tell the factory what kind of pizza we want, just like you would do at a restaurant. But be careful because this way you will never know what's inside the secret sauce. We added a special ingredient. Next one is Builder Pattern. Now in our previous example, if you want to have a little more control over how the pizza is made, you can go with the Builder Pattern. Builder Pattern separates the construction of the complex object such as pizza from its representation. The idea is that if we want to make a pizza, we don't immediately have to pass in all the parameters. We can use a pizza builder instead. We'll have an individual method for adding each ingredient whether it's a crust, sauce, cheese or toppings. Each one will return a reference to the builder and finally we will have a build method which will return the final pizza. Then we can instantiate a pizza builder, add the crust that we want, the sauce that we want, the cheese that we want and the toppings that we want. And we can change these methods because remember each one will return a reference to the builder. Finally we can build it and we have the exact pizza that we want. Another one we have is the singleton design pattern which is like one security guard who takes his job way too seriously and stands at the entrance of party yelling no duplicate instances allowed. So utilizing the singleton design pattern, we guarantee a single class instance application wide for easy access. However, I have noticed one thing. This singleton is visiting therapy quite often. The reason behind this remains a mystery to me. All right, let's apply this to SQLite database integration, optimizing resource use and maintaining consistent data actions. So create a class called database helper, where we want to ensure that only one instance of this class is created throughout the lifetime of the application. Therefore, the Declare a private constructor in it, which can only be called from within the database helper class. Declare a private static variable database to store that instance. Next, declare a static variable instance, a global point of access to the instance of the class, so that you can access the methods of the database helper class. Now initialize this instance variable with a call to the private constructor, so that the instance is created only once and we return the same instance every time it is accessed. Next, declare a private method in a database to initialize the SQLite database connection and return a future of database instance. Also create a getter database that returns the database instance. It first checks if the database variable is not null. If it is not null, it returns the database instance directly. Otherwise, we will call the any database method to initialize the database instance. And finally, it then returns the database instance. So after initialization, you can access all these methods available inside this database class to perform the CRUD operations. Okay, now I understood. That's why the singleton pattern go to therapy. It just couldn't handle all the instance pressure. Next, we have the adapter, a structural pattern. It's similar to the real world where we have a European style plug, but you live in the United States where the outlets use a different type of socket. Let's say our app displays a user list from a JSON API. Initially, we only have a JSON user API implementing user interface with the fetch user method. Now we need to add an XML data source, but we face compatibility issues as our interface only return list of users. To solve this incompatibility issue, we will create an adapter that converts the XML document into a list of JSON objects. 
Therefore, create XML user adapter which also implements the user interface. We define XML user API class with get XML user method for XML data. Inside the adapters folder, a XML user adapter dart contains the XML user adapter. It takes an XML user API converting XML to user object using parse user XML method. In XML user adapters fetch user method, we parse XML and return user objects. Now inside init state of my home page, we use XML user adapter with XML XML user API instance, adapting it to user interface. The XML user adapter, which is the gap between XML user API and user interface, enabling seamless integration. This showcases the adapter design pattern, integrating incompatible interfaces flawlessly. Now the last one we have is the observer design pattern. I prefer to call it PubSub pattern. It's like a news agency that publishes articles. Now in this news hungry world, we have got eager subscribers just waiting for the articles to drop. These subscribers rely on the news agency hoping to get the freshest stories the moment they are out of the oven. One way to implement this pattern is to have the subject interface, which defines the subject being observed with methods to register, remove and notify observers. This concrete subject class implements the subject interface and maintains a list of observers and a state variable. So whenever the state changes, it notifies all the registered observers. Moving on, we create the observer interface, which provides a method called update that is called by the subject whenever there is a state change. We have get state and set state to access or modify the state. Here the register observer method adds the observer to our observers list and the remove observer method to remove the observers from the list. Lastly, we have the notify observers method to notify all the registered observers. This concrete observer class implements the observer interface. It holds the observer's name and a reference to the subject it is observing and inside the update method, it prints the subject state whenever it receives an update. In the main function, create a concrete subject and a couple of concrete observers. We register the observers with the subject, change the subject state, remove an observer and then notify the remaining observers. That's all for the top 5 design patterns in Flutter. If you are interested in becoming a professional Flutter developer, I encourage you to join our 12-week Flutter training, where you will master all the Flutter topics by watching our structured courses.